Here it is, the new Mitsubishi Triton. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's got a new interior, it's got more technology and more safety as well. A new powertrain, three and a half ton towing. So is there anything that's not to like about this ute? We might be surprised by the pricing. Stay tuned, I'm gonna cover it all in this review. Thank you for subscribing. Let's get to it. Prices have gone up across the entire Triton range. And in this review, I'm just covering off the dual cab models. They will arrive first into Australia. There will be single cab chassis and club cab models later on. But we're just talking dual cabs right now. All of them have the same 2.4 litre twin turbo diesel engine and a six speed automatic transmission. I'll tell you more about that in a sec. There will be manual models later on as well, but they'll be the lower grade versions only. Now let's talk about the dual cab lineup. So you've got the entry level version, the GLX 4x2, so it's rear wheel drive and it's about $44,000 before on road costs add $7,000 if you want 4x4 and you want that base model vehicle and up from there you've got the GLX plus it costs a little bit more you get a few more features for your money it's a dual cab auto only and then you've got the GLS which I think might actually be the pick of the range and up from there you've got this one here which is the GSR the top spec version around 64 grand before on-road costs so yeah prices have gone up this is now playing in a slightly different position to where it used to when you consider the competitors against this ute. I'm gonna name some of the best ones that I think you should be looking at as well if you are considering a Triton in the next segment of this video. But first, let's talk about what you're getting as standard across the entire range. You're getting LED lights. You're also getting a nine inch touchscreen media system on the inside with wireless Apple CarPlay and wired, as well as wired Android Auto. And you've got some really nice features if you step up a few rungs on that model range. In the GLS, you can get it with cloth trim or leather for an extra 1500 bucks if you want. And this one here, the GSR, adds a few extra styling flourishes to make it stand out from the pack. I will point out though that none of them come with a tonneau cover, a roller tonneau cover, a hard cover, or a tow bar. And those are all accessories that you can option if you wish through your Mitsubishi dealer. All right, let's talk about some of the best alternatives to this truck then. Okay, so the best alternative in the Ute segment, in my opinion, is the Ford Ranger. It remains the benchmark vehicle in this segment. It has three and a half ton towing. It has the choice of either a twin turbo diesel or a punchy V6, which is an absolute cracker. It feels more refined on the road and more car-like to drive than any other Ute in this segment. And it's that that makes me recommend it as my number one pick when it comes to alternatives to this. But hey, if you aren't sold on the Ranger for whatever reason, maybe you had a bad experience with a previous Ford, maybe you want to check out a Toyota Hilux. I've done a couple of reviews on the Hilux and it's starting to look like pretty good value these days because it's getting a bit older. It's not necessarily that expensive compared to some of its rivals. If you can get one, there are still wait lists for some Hilux variants, but hey, I still think that it's not the nicest thing to live with, but very, very good off-road. And it's also got three and a half ton towing like the Ranger and like this. And if you're not sold on either of those, then maybe you should check out the Isuzu D-Max. I reckon it does stack up still as a really good choice. And especially at the budget end, if you are looking to save a little bit and you don't want all the creature comforts that you might get in some of those other utes. But tell me what you think in the comments section below. Would you choose those? Would you choose an Amarok instead? It's also a really bloody good ute. The new Triton is bigger than it ever has been, but it's still not as big as some of the other utes in this segment. It's just under 5.4 meters in length, but it does have a much longer wheelbase now than it did before. So that means that the extra 130 millimeters between the front and rear wheels does make a difference to the ride and also how planted it feels in different situations. Now, also bigger is the tray. All right, so let's look in the tub here. Firstly, that's probably not good enough for the top spec model. In fact, a lot of other utes these days now have a dampened uh, opening for the tailgate. It's quite loud, quite heavy too. So, I mean, that's not ideal, but you do have a much better size of tub now in the Triton than you did before. It's wider, so you get more width, and it's obviously uh, a pretty decent size. You can see the figures on your screen now, and you can fit a 1200 by 800 Euro pallet behind the wheel arches, but the wheel arches are too narrow for you to be able to fit a proper Aussie pallet between the arches. So I guess there are some advantages to some of the other utes out there after all, but still, it's a pretty usable space, I reckon. 
Like I said though, you don't get a cargo cover or a tonneau cover or anything on this top spec model. I think that's just a little bit cheap. You do get a tub liner, it's one of those plastic ones that's still a bit slippery. So look, you might wanna make it a bit better than it is, but at least the dimensions are better than they were. Oh, and a couple of other things. You do get four tie down points in the tub, but you don't get a power outlet. Some other utes have like a 12 volt outlet in the back, not here, and there's no lights in the tub either. If you own the existing version of the Mitsubishi Triton, you're not gonna know yourself when you sit in the new one because it is a big change. And I have to say a big improvement people because a lot of what has changed has been made a lot better. So you've got a new big nine inch touchscreen media system here. Thankfully, still with buttons down below for controls. Thankfully, still with dials as well. But it's very familiar if you own an Outlander or maybe you've sat in an Outlander or watch my Outlander review, link in the description, you'll see that it is very, very familiar. And that's no problem because it's a good screen, a good system. There's wireless and wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto as well. Uh, in the higher grade models, like this one you get sat nav too you've also got a couple of usb ports one usb c and one usb a down here you've got a wireless phone charger as well in some specs and look i love these chunky controls for the air conditioning i think that they are fantastic they're a really smart move because i mean if you're uh, working in the farm or something like that and you've got gloves on you don't have to take your gloves off to muck around with controlling things you've got fan buttons, you've got temperature buttons. So all of that is logical and all of it is really ergonomically pleasing in terms of the placement of the controls as well. Now, in terms of storage, if you buy this top spec model, you get pop out cup holders at the edge of the dashboard, but you don't in any of the other grades. I think that's a bit rude. Um, you also get a dual glove box in all grades, but some of them aren't closable. So if you buy one of the base model cars, it's just an open glove box instead. And you've also got bottle holders in the doors, which are big enough for an A4 clipboard and a 1.5 liter water bottle as well. You've got big cup holders here. They might be a little bit deep for your piccolo latte, uh, but just keep in mind that you've also got your control for your four wheel drive here. You've got a manual handbrake in all grades handbrakeies, and you've also got a covered center console bin as well. Material finishes in this top spec model, really good, I have to say. Nice soft elbow pads where you should have soft elbow pads. You've also got these new seats, which I don't love. I think that they do lack a little bit of under thigh support when you're cornering, for instance. Um, and it just isn't necessarily as compact feeling as the last Triton was, and the seats are a bit bigger as well. So, hey, Maybe that's good. Maybe you're a bigger person and you like bigger seats, but um, they're a bit more loungy than the last Triton, in my opinion. And I don't know, you tell me your thoughts in the comment section. I hate dark headliners and I've driven the other versions of this Ute with the lighter headliner and it makes it feel nicer and airier, in my opinion. Now, let's go and check out the back seat and see what the space is like. Remember, it's a bigger Ute. Is it bigger back there? The backseat experience in the new Triton is better than the old Triton, and that is to do with how much space you've got on offer back here. Look, this seat is set for my driving position at 182 centimeters or six foot. I've got a fair bit of knee room. My feet are pretty tight underneath there. Headroom is good though. And one of the big talking points about this new generation model is that it's wider and you can more easily fit three adults across the back. But if you have kids, there are isofix points in the window seats, but just one top tether point behind the center headrest here. So that means you have to feed it through a loop thing next to the headrest and then attach your top tether to the middle there. So, I mean, it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but it's something you should be mindful of if you do need to fit a child seat to this car. You've also got a flip down armrest, what sort of just flops down actually, with some cup holders and a couple of USB ports down here as well, 1A, 1C. You've got map pockets, including a big one and a couple of device ones, and just a big one on this seat for some reason. And one other thing that I really like about the Triton is it doesn't have directional vents per se, but it does have this roof mounted ventilation system, which basically draws air from the front and feeds it into your back passengers. And it has a controller up here so you can adjust the fan speed that comes out. So it does make a bit of a difference if you are riding with kids in the back, especially because, hey, uh, it's a pretty dark cabin, a bit more air circulation might make them feel a little bit happier, but hey, they should be happy anyway. This is a pretty good experience back here. 
Okay, now I mentioned earlier they all come with the same engine. It is a new engine, a 2.4 litre still, but it has twin turbochargers, and that means that it has more power and more torque. It's also got a revised six speed automatic transmission. And as I mentioned, there is still a rear wheel drive version if you want, and there'll be more rear wheel drive versions in the lower specs as well as that manual transmission that I mentioned. But uh, the majority of buyers are gonna get the four-wheel drive versions of this ute, which still continues in some grades to have Mitsubishi's Super Select 2 four-wheel drive system. So you can have it basically running as an all-wheel drive on sealed surfaces and then lock the center diff for four-wheel drive high range if you need it. There's low range as well, of course. A rear diff as well with a button to press if you want to actuate it. Um, it's an electronic braked rear diff though, so keep that in mind. And Speaking of brakes, or brake towing capacity at least, you've got three and a half ton towing capacity this time around for the Triton, which makes it step up into the big boy league when it comes to towing. I won't be towing in this review though. Let me know if you want me to. I'll see if I can tee something up later on. Height adjustable seat belts. Don't get that in a Ford Ranger. <laughs> So for this drive of the Triton, I'm not necessarily doing what I would usually do with a test vehicle because I'm here in Murray Bridge outside Adelaide in South Australia where the event is being held for the launch of the new Triton. Thanks to Mitsubishi for having me along. Um, it is a good ute. Let me tell you people, this is one of the better driving utes in the segment, at least with the versions that have three leaf springs in the back that I've tested. So that's the GLS and the GSR top spec models. They have three leaf springs at the back, whereas if you choose one of the more affordable models, they're made for work, so they have four leaf springs and a rougher ride, apparently. Um, we haven't had a chance to drive them, but um, it stands to reason that they might not necessarily be quite as cushy or cozy as this ride is. And the suspension is the big talking point with this new generation Triton because the new model has Australian engineered and tuned suspension. So it is an Australian specific setup that we get, different hardware included. So it is a very, very competent and comfortable ute to drive in unique Aussie scenarios, like these very unpleasant roads that we have all over the place. And other things like if you're coming across a gravel track with corrugations or a dirt road that's all chopped up uh, all of a sudden, because sometimes that happens out here in Australia, uh, yeah, you will find that it does have a very confident and comfortable ride, even with nothing in the tray. And that's one of the things that stands out most, that it does have that comfort to it. And also it's got a new, I guess, manner to the way that it drives compared to the last one. The steering is much more precise. It has this really nice on-center feel. It's an electric steering system. The previous ones had a hydraulic system, but this is a really confident feeling vehicle to drive. You don't feel like there's any guesswork and it does turn really well when you need it to. It's got a really nice steering action to it. As well as that, it's got one of the smallest turning circles in the ute segment, so it's pretty urban friendly. Um, I will just say though that if you are driving it a little bit quicker through, uh, I guess, a series of corners, you might find that um, the seats are a little bit soft, so you sort of flop around a little bit more than you might have in the existing Triton, which had smaller seats, which were also a lot firmer. Now, obviously, it's also got a new engine, um, and that's a pretty big talking point. It's a twin turbo diesel unit, and it does make a big difference compared to the last one. Not that the last one was a bad engine, just that this one has less lag and is more willing to just continue pulling through the rev range, and that makes it a more amenable thing in more situations. However, that automatic transmission does have a tendency to sort of jump between fifth and sixth gear when you are on the open road particularly, and there's undulating surfaces. So if you're going over some rolling hills or something, you might find that the transmission is a little bit busy, but it's hardly a deal breaker. Okay, so what could be improved? Well, at highway speed or freeway speed, there's quite a bit of wind noise coming into the cabin, and that can be a little bit frustrating on longer drives. And you'll also find that what is really frustrating is this little driver monitoring camera, which keeps an eye on your eyes to make sure that you're not distracted. And it's actually distracting in its own way because a lot of the time it's getting it wrong. Like I was looking straight ahead before and it beeped at me to tell me that I wasn't looking at the road. So. Um, 
it's frustrating and hopefully they can fine tune how it behaves because uh, you might find it to be too frustrating. Hopefully not though. You can turn that system off if you want, but I think you have to do it every time you drive the car. So that's even more annoying. Overall, this ute has this feeling of maturity, solidity, and also a little bit more manliness than the last one, just because it sits a bit more like a wombat on the road. It's pretty solid. So yeah, I reckon that it does have a lot going for it, and I would happily recommend it if you are looking for a ute that's good to drive. All right, let's go off-road in the Mitsubishi Triton. Here we go. This is an off-road course outside Adelaide that they've uh, allowed us to use for today. I've already done a couple of times uh, this track and um, look, this car is very, very capable and compared to the existing Triton, it feels considerably more planted, considerably more mature, bigger by a long, long way. It is a way bigger vehicle in terms of feel on the road when you are off-roading. It's wider and it has that longer wheelbase, which means uh, a more planted feel for sure. But um, it also means that, you know, you might not be able to squeeze through the tight gaps that you used to in your existing Triton. Right now, I'm in four-wheel drive, high range, but locked center diff. So that's 4HLC on the little drive controller there. And it will basically lock that center diff for you. And there's a few different drive modes you can pick if you wish. You can just leave it in normal mode like I'm on now, or you can go into one of the other drive modes, which includes uh, mud or sand or normal. So mud, sand, normal, they're your choices. Um, this doesn't really match any of those. So uh, I'll put it into the sand mode because it is a little bit scrabbly, but it's um, certainly a big change compared to the last version of this Triton. Just got to concentrate a little bit here so I don't hit that massive rock. And yep, 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 we're up, we're up, we're up. Okay, this is a definitely a different kind of four-wheel drive experience to the last Triton I drove off-road in this sort of hardcore off-roady stuff. And it's not necessarily the most hardcore thing that you'll ever experience this track, but it is representative of what you might be able to find if you were to drive an hour or two outside of a city centre. And it's also unmodified and the tyres are at the standard road pressures. So there's a little bit of leeway there if you do want it, but I haven't found that I've uh, actually needed to use that leeway. Now, one thing that has uh, stuck out to me pretty noticeably is the throttle responsiveness in this car is, well, it's good. It's very, very unlaggy when you are getting on the throttle in high range or low range situations. And also the brake pedal feel is quite bitey. It will grab um, a lot quicker than you might expect it to in some situations. And of course, there is a hill descent control system if you need that. It's just doing this really easily. I've only touched down a couple of times on some uh, more precarious looking rocky sections, and that was mainly just the side steps touching down. And that's a common thing with dual cab utes with side steps that hang a little low. So it is definitely uh, capable of this sort of stuff. Now I'm gonna throw some angles on your screen now for you to run your eye over. The approach angle, the departure angle, and also the breakover angle for this new generation Triton and also the waiting depth. It's just crawling up here really easily. You can hear the fan kick in every now and then if you are taking off from a standstill at lower speeds, but um, look, this thing is doing it easy and I'm only in high range, but this part up here is getting a little bit nastier. So I'm just gonna pop it into low range, up into neutral, foot on the brake, low range selected, done. That is so quick. That is so, so quick to choose low range. So. As you can hear the fan making a bit of a racket. Um, there's a couple of different modes in low range as well. Uh, I think right now we're in normal, but I'll put it into rock. And rock, according to the engineers, will basically just hold gears as long as possible. So for steep, craggy, rocky stuff like I'm doing right now, it is certainly the best option. 
Rightio, so hill descent control is on. There's a little icon on the dashboard that uh, is a green flasher that shows you that you are using hill descent control. It's set at three kilometers an hour right now. And yeah, it's a leisurely pace, that's for sure. Uh, and if you just wanna go a bit quicker, you can just touch the throttle a little bit and it'll adjust to that pace that you set with the throttle. Unlike some other vehicles out there, there is no cruise control adjustment for it. So if you hit the trigger, nothing actually happens there. So um, that's a bit different to some other four wheel drives and it might take a bit of getting used to if you are used to using the cruise controls to set the speed, but it does hold its pace really nicely in hill control situations. So yeah, it's ticking a lot of boxes, this thing. I mean, there's not much to complain about in terms of straight out of the box, four x four ute off-road capability. I mean, there is one thing maybe that you could complain about. There's a surround view camera and it does work to show you what's happening around the car. You can set it so if you're in drive, it's showing a forward view camera as well. And that gives you a good view of what's coming up on the track ahead of you. But I will say that it is a bit um, contrasty, so it's very yellow, and maybe that's an adjustment that you can make in the screen, I just haven't had time, but uh, also it will turn itself off if you go over a certain speed. So you will find that if you are relying on it and you end up going 12 or 13 k's an hour, it'll switch off and you have to hit the button again if you're going slower. So those are maybe improvements that could be made. Maybe the, the speed allowance should be just a little bit higher for the surround view camera system. And look, the ride, I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, in terms of ride comfort for off-road stuff. Um, when you're driving on something like this, it's never going to be that comfortable. It is a pretty uh, treacherous old little track, this one. So it is still bumpy and lumpy, but I would say that it's not necessarily as bumpy and lumpy as some of the other utes out there in this segment that are really good at off-road stuff, namely the Toyota Hilux and even the Volkswagen Amarok feels just a little bit sharper edged than this in some of the situations that I've experienced today anyway. But if you are after the most comfortable for off-road stuff, I still think that the Ranger is going to be a slightly more comfortable ute to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. Another thing that Mitsubishi has really said that they've focused on with this new Triton Ute is the steering feel. It's a new electric steering system. So they basically said that the feedback from customers is that they want it to feel accurate. Uh, Aussies love accurate steering that has a nice on-center feel to it and also that is predictable. And this does have predictable steering. It's quick, lock to lock. There's 3.3 turns lock to lock. So if you are off-roading, I have to say, all told, this is a very impressive four-wheel drive ute. Very impressive, straight off the showroom floor. All right, let's talk about fuel efficiency for this new generation Triton range. Now, these figures might change depending on the variant that you pick later on, but at the moment, just for the dual cabs, you'll see the four by two auto fuel consumption figure. That's the official number, what you should be able to achieve across a mix of driving, obviously not loaded and not towing, but that is pretty good, I reckon. About 10% better than the existing Triton four by two dual cab auto. And now you'll see the four x four models. And that is also very, very impressive. On paper, it seems like a super duper efficient ute. And look, in reality, I've seen some pretty good numbers as well across a mix of driving, including the off-road part that we did. This is what I've seen. And I reckon that is really, really impressive for a ute like this. At the time I'm filming this, which is February 2024, there is no ANCAP or Euro ANCAP safety rating for the new generation Mitsubishi Triton, but it is going through the testing process as I film this. So there will be at some point soon, hopefully it's five stars. It does have all the tech and maybe some more in order to achieve that kind of score. Things like autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You've also got lane keeping assistance. There's blind spot monitoring, front cross traffic alert, but 
only if you don't have a front protection bar like a bull bar fitted to the car it won't be activated if you do but you can have it on if you don't get one of those protection bars there's rear cross traffic alert as well and you also get rear AEB uh, so that's rear autonomous emergency braking and a surround view camera as well and that camera does make a difference when you're parking or when you're off-roading and you also get parking sensors for all grades of the dual cab pickup model range and this new ute also comes with features like a driver fatigue monitor so it'll keep an eye on your eyes to make sure that you're not distracted it is a little bit annoying though there's a speed sign recognition system too like most other cars have these days and it's not annoying which i'm grateful for and there's also eight airbags fitted to this ute dual front front side there's a front center airbag driver's knee airbag and full length curtain coverage so safe yeah i reckon it is Mitsubishi Australia offers a conditional 10-year, 200,000km warranty. So what's the condition? We well, have to service it through the dealership network of Mitsubishi Australia. So that means that if you don't do that, if you don't service with Mitsubishi, you've got a 5-year, 100,000k warranty, which is still pretty good, honestly. There's also a 10-year capped price servicing plan available for this ute. The average cost over that 10 years, or 150,000ks, because you've got annual or 15,000k intervals, is $669, which is a little bit cheaper than the last one, but it's still not necessarily the cheapest ute to own and maintain, but still competitive, I reckon. There's also only four years of roadside assistance, but I think that is also pretty decent. Oh, I'll also mention, if you fit genuine accessories to this car through the Mitsubishi dealership network, they are eligible for a 10-year warranty as well. So maybe don't go to ARB or one of those other mobs and fit one of the genuine ones. Could be a good option. For me, this is one of the most impressive Mitsubishis I've ever driven. Look, it follows in the footsteps of the new generation Outlander, it's really good. This thing is really, really good too. You can tell that Mitsubishi has paid a lot of attention to make this a better fit for the Australian market and for global markets as well. And that technology, that safety, those features on the inside, and hey, the way it drives just makes it a far more compelling option than the existing Triton, even if some of the pricing and spec stuff could be improved. We'll wait and see if that changes in the future. And also, if there's anything else you want to know about the Triton, let me know in the comments section. If there's a towing test that you'd like to see, i also try and do one of those at some point in the future as well. Thank you for watching, and thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.